Many Adventists think that Dr. Vine wants to divide the church. But this particular sermon shows that his intention is not to divide the church. He only stands for the truth. In this particular sermon, Dr. Vine showed how the SDA church has grown over the years and uh, encouraged Adventists to do more mission, to bring people to Christ, and also to the SDA faith. What defined the church in the New Testament was when the churches gathered together, they gathered for praise and for prayer and for worship and for study of the Word of God and for witness to their community. Those kind of five core elements. You find that in the New Testament churches, through particularly in the book of Acts and the writings of the Apostle Paul. I want to encourage you uh, to do all you can so that your congregation is a place where you gather for praise and for prayer and for study of the Word of God and for witness to your community. And the other, the other thing is fellowship, like a ministry one to another, to bear one another's burdens, to carry each other through life. Because when those five ingredients are there, the, new, the ingredients of a New Testament church, um, there is something amazing about the kingdom of God. And so um, baptized members, we had 3,500 when the General Conference was formed in 1863. Now there's about 22.7 million. Uh, so actually, there are more Adventists in the world than there are within Judaism today. We'll look at some of those statistics in a few minutes. So um, Seventh-day Adventists are a more significant part of the world in terms of numbers than, than, than the Jewish community. Um, the world population then was 1.3 billion. Now it's just over 8 billion and, and, and rising fast. Um, back then, there were 373,000 people to every one Adventist. Now there's 351 people to every Adventist. Look at that. That's a thousand-fold increase. That's an amazing change in ratio, okay? And then you look at annual tithes and offerings was $8,000 uh, back then in 1863. And in December 23, or December 22, it was $3.8 billion around the world. Now, that's a lot of money. And I am for strong suspicion that the, the tithe should be a lot more than that, actually. But anyway, uh, that's the official receipts there. And then if you look at schools, we had no schools. We now have 9,800 schools with 2.17 million kids enrolled in them. Now, can you imagine for a minute, um, if, as, as I travel around the world, every church has a different mission statement. Every church has a different mission statement. Every conference has a different mission statement. Every sanitarium, every printing house, every, everything, everything, everything has a different mission statement. And yet... Um, I firmly believe that if we looked at our, let's say, 9,800 schools with 2.17 million people enrolling, even if you had 1% of 1% of those as full-time evangelists trained for evangelism when they, when they graduate, we would have thousands and thousands and thousands of extra evangelists around the world. It would be an amazing thing. We're active now in 212 countries of the world. There are 235 countries in the United Nations. We had 30 employees back in 1863 now almost 352,000. And you look at the other, the other things there, 19 media centers, 23 foods industries, and so forth and so forth. So God has blessed incredibly um, the growth of the Advent movement, but there is still an unfinished business. And so Jesus said to his disciples, and uh, there's a parallel in the writings of Sister White, he said, then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so what Jesus says here, he doesn't say, pray the Lord of the harvest for money. Because whenever somebody steps forward, God always provides a means for them to go. What God is looking for is people. He's looking for people with hair the color of mine. And then with a light shining on me, it looks really silver. I recognize that. Um, but I'm seeing some young people sitting in the room here tonight, and uh, you can be missionaries for Jesus Christ as well. You can choose tonight that I'm going to be a servant of Jesus for the rest of my life. And so we're to ask the Lord of the harvest for laborers to go into the harvest. And Sister White says this. She says in the book To Be Like Jesus, page 278, she said, I was given instruction that as we approach the end, there'll be large gatherings in our cities and that preparations must be made to present the truth at these gatherings. When Christ was upon the earth, he took advantage of such opportunities. Wherever a large number of people were gathered for any purpose, his voice was heard clear and distinct, giving his message. And so I really appreciate there are Adventists today 
who follow um, whenever President Trump does a, a campaign rally, there's Adventists there giving up great controversies. Have you seen those? And when you've got 40,000 people queuing in miles down the road, they're walking down the road, praying with people and giving out great controversies. That's an amazing thing to do. And, you know, if there's a ball game or if there's a major event in town, we should be taking advantage of these opportunities to hand out literature and pray with people. And I've discovered over the years that if you say to even the most hardened atheist, do you mind if I pray with you? Most, even the most hardened atheist will kind of say, okay. Okay, you can pray for me. And it's amazing when you pray for somebody you've never met before and you pray for God's blessings upon them and their body, their health, their family, and so forth, how many times people, they start, the tears start rolling down their faces, even if they don't officially believe in God. The Holy Spirit brings something into their life in that moment. And for years afterwards, they will remember that encounter with a living, breathing Christian. So I want to encourage you in this congregation um, whenever there's a major gathering, a major event in this community, be intentional about being there. Be intentional about putting some, a group of people out there, giving out literature, you know, going, can I pray with you today? Um, because you will touch people's lives in profound and beautiful ways. So these are the countries here. This is the, the, the no Adventist list. Um, the, there are 235 countries in the world. We have a presence in 212 and no presence in 23. So if you look at that list of, of countries, it's quite a list. You've got Afghanistan. Um, now, as far as I know, there are two Adventist families in Afghanistan, but they keep under the radar because of the Taliban. You've got the Arland Islands, and they're between Finland and Sweden, and they're basically uninhabited anyway. You've got Dar es Salaam um, in Brunei. Uh, that's a, a Muslim uh, kind of sultanate there. You've got the Comoros in Africa, Gibraltar in Europe has no Adventist presence. Even though it's a British territory, there's no Adventist presence. Uh, Greenland. So friends, we need to keep going. We need to keep going to work for the Lord and bring people to Christ. All right? So in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18, um, the Bible says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So friends, Jesus is only telling us to go. And he is going to do the work through us. Through us. Sometimes we may think that we are not wealthy. Sometimes we may think that we have nothing in our heads to share with people. But friends... It is God who is going to do the work through you. So we should not um, uh, have any excuse for going to work for the Lord. You can pray. You can do something. Friends, what are you currently doing to help spread the word of God? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. Somebody is praying. Somebody is donating financially to support the work of God. Somebody is sharing literature. Somebody is singing. You know, somebody is preaching. So I like how Dr. Vine actually encouraged all Seventh-day Adventists, especially the Menton SDA Church, to be involved in mission, to reach out to people. To tell them how much Jesus loves them. Let us keep doing what we can to help advance the kingdom of God on earth. We are in the end times. And uh, we need to intensify how we spread the word of God. Friends, this is all that I had to share with you today. Um, my name is Lawrence as usual. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. God bless you.